information about our movement, the distance of movement, and the direction of movement, and then computes that uh, all the time, updates position based on how far you move, in how far away, and what direction. Just like a GPS in a car that also uses movement of the car much more than actually what it looks like. So GPS doesn't care about whether it's a red house or a blue house. It cares about how much you move and what direction you move. And these cells operate much in the same way. And for that reason, we sometimes refer to them as the brain's GPS. So this is um, what we call basic research. And we have found out a lot about the positioning system of the brain. Um, so is this only present in rats and mice? No. So you see rats and mice uh, here in the upper left part. That's where most of the work has been done. But actually it turned out later that also bats have this system. So you see them in the bottom right. So bats are in a completely different branch of the mammalian evolutionary tree and still have them. And then they were found in monkeys and they were found in humans. So since this is present in all mammals, this is something that probably developed very early in evolution, and much of the properties that we have found in rats and mice probably also operate in our own brain as well. So then a few words on how this can be applied. First of all, um, this is relevant to some diseases of the brain. And that particularly applies to a disease called Alzheimer's disease, which I'm sure you heard about. So Alzheimer's disease happens to start in the very, very same brain area where um, our grid cells are. So it turns out that in this brain area, the blue brain area, uh, entorhinal cortex, where you have the grid cells, so you have the brain's internal map, this is also the brain area that is first damaged in Alzheimer's disease, and that's why patients with Alzheimer's disease can't find their way. Study behind here that shows that already before Alzheimer's starts and can be diagnosed at all, this brain area is starting to shrink. So then, knowing that uh, that uh, Alzheimer's disease increases with age, uh, and we also know that um, the the life expectancy is growing and growing. We're getting much and much older, and this becomes a, an ever-increasing problem at the moment, as well as other diseases. But then, more relevant to this, uh, the topic of and understanding the brain's positioning system does not only help us solve diseases, it's compute. And the brain is a very, very sophisticated computer, which is different from uh, old-fashioned computers to a very, very large extent, doing hundreds of thousands of operations at the same time, not only at the same time, but continuously interacting, so that brains can, up till now, only brains could solve um, problems like uh, where um, the answers are not uh, are ambiguous. Just, for example, saying if an object is object A or object B hasn't always been easy for a computer because Maybe the light conditions or context is different. Now this is changing, but um, brains are very good at solving problems where stimuli are ambiguous. They are never the same. Each time they are slightly different. And brains are also uh, very good at learning. So believe um, that by understanding how computer. development uh, useful for the development of better computers. Uh, they operate in modular ways, they operate in parallel, they interact, and this may perhaps tell us actually uh, information that can be used. But perhaps the most important of all exemplified by the ability of computers to play Go, and as you probably know, in Go is completely bit, hundred of hundred times by a computer, and that computer has not only been told how to play Go, but actually has found it out by itself. That's a paper. 
Well, because uh, we want to leave some time for discussion, just say that we are in the, at the stage where we really um, are beginning to, um, to uh, um, neuroscience is really taking off. We're beginning to understand how computations occur. With a movie that illustrates how um, while I'm talking. So this shows a uh, mouse that has a miniature microscope on its head. Two gram is this microscope, and that microscope allows us to monitor activity of many hundreds of cells at the same time. So the technology is changing in neuroscience as well, and uh, I think this is um, uh, will what make the, the uh, split between neuroscience and artificial the intelligence the just smaller and smaller and we will come to a stage where we can learn from each other. These neurons so with that, with just fade out the video and I think we can uh, glow start with the questions. Spice. Within the window, All right, that was that some talk. Now, Thank you very much. There are hundreds Hello, of grids. Professor Mo's presentation. Now, next, we will go to the Q&A stage. I believe now there is Q&A session. Now, thank ask questions to Edward Moser, and you can also get the books signed by Moser. So everybody can ask questions. We'll actually be handing out some prizes. Uh, hi, Professor Moser. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, you mentioned about the parallel uh, movement of the neural cell, right? Yeah. Um, and, and that's how we can speak so, uh, think so fast, and uh, even better than a computer. However, if the supercomputer is super fast, then uh, maybe it doesn't have to be so linear, and, and it's super, super fast, yeah. right? So the computer should be designed like human, and, and uh, the data uh, transmitted in parallel, or uh, computer to, to just go linear, linear, and then do the same trick as uh, human. Yeah. Great. Thank you. But I, um, I think uh, the word parallel shouldn't be taken too literally. It means that the brain um, is different from traditional computers in the sense that it can do many, many things in an interactive way. So that uh, while I'm sitting here, I'm looking at you, I'm uh, trying to remember what you said, I'm trying to remember um, to keep the time. All these things happen at, in, in, at the same time. Not in, um, important, but computers have always been good at speed, much, much better than the human brain. So I think the difference is the ability to have so many things going on at the same time and still having them to operate with each other. And then that can't be just one path. It can't be just parallel. You have to have many paths in all kinds of directions. Other question? Right over here. Uh, so I've got a question. I know that no matter it's uh, from uh, driving, this kind of uh, philosophy or principles of brain is very different from that of computers. So this fire uh, autonomous engines. The world, the human brain, artificial intelligence on the electronic side, so supercomputing, etc. How do the two tie together? Yeah. Um that's an important question because those two fields, neuroscience and artificial, didn't really talk too much to each other. I, now I think uh, neuroscience and also artificial intelligence have developed to a point where they're actually studying very much the same systems. So we, I mean, I am one of them, study how. And then um, now a growing community in artificial intelligence studying the very, very same operations, and it is possible now to do it in ways that are, in many ways, at least 
basically that is translated is um, not something I expect, but the fact that we know the algorithms and the algorithms that we can describe as computational functions in the brain, that can also be used exactly in the same way on neural networks in computers. Thanks for your speech. Some inspirations about the relationship between technology and brand. And you also mentioned problems on the brand. You may have some or this. So is it possible high technology to treat these diseases? I mean, can we use some artificial functions, artificial methods to treat these diseases? For example, we can uh, create a bridge among the heart organizations. So is it possible we can use this kind of uh, artificial these brain-related diseases? For example, can we use some microcircuit? Can we use some electrode to treat these brain diseases so that we can relieve people from these pains? So step by step, we can apply this electric. So it's a possible. I'll just translate really quickly. The, the whole question is about can we local a trend or a future uh, in, pro in solving some of the... Uh... So the question is about how we can localize it, uh, yes. Right. So um, local, uh, in the past, it was in uh, functions to areas of the brain. Now localize it to the particular neurons that um, are involved in, for example, finding your way so they are usually scattered together, they're intermingled, uh, but uh, it is possible to get access, get access to those, let's say, hundreds or thousands of neurons that do this. And better than that, neurons, we're also getting to the, actually, to the real computational algorithms that these neurons are doing. So it's, there's very, very great progress in the field at the moment. It's about artificial intelligence. So like the function of the brain is very different from artificial intelligence. And now deep learning is developing very fast. So this kind of artificial brand, especially in terms of creativity. So for example, in 2015, AlphaGo the goal with a Korean player and also the uh, goal. Human players, they cannot predict. One can artificial intelligence reach human brands. The question is, how long do you think it will take? I think that's uh, very difficult, um, and um, the reason why, uh, given I witnessed the development, how fast uh, things have changed during the last, let's say, five, ten years. Um, so who? Knows? I think uh, that there are some things that are specifically defined that are easy to solve when you have a specific task like finding the way on the road for a self-driving car or uh, understanding spoken language translation.
very different functions that creative thinking where there's no goal. You just let thoughts go and suddenly you get a completely new idea. It still take quite a while before you might be able to do that, but only for sure be much better than the human brain on task like for example driving so i think it's very very hard to major the next A wonderful wonderful q a and thank you once again for this amazing speech and uh, unfortunately we are out of time but uh, thank you once again dr moser thank you professor moser Thank you everybody for this attendance. Actually, this afternoon we'll be having another exciting seed featuring our UI UX.